Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is Andy in Singapore. For today's video, we are going to do a really quick review of the SBSA253. And many of you will find this watch very familiar, at least very familiar looking, all right? So it is a remake or reissue or an upgrade of an old Seiko classic. So incidentally, I reviewed this watch last year, last April. I did a review of the SNXS79 and this watch is sort of like the upgraded sibling to that watch. And I also like to share with you the purpose of this video. It is to compare and to show you, all right, if people were wrong or right about this watch, all right? So when this watch was launched earlier this year, many Seiko fans out there, they were saying, wow, it's a big mistake. Uh, Seiko, uh, you know, they're doing it again. They're making the same mistakes. They're not adding anything new. They're just, upcharging their watches and all that so the purpose of this video is to just you know do a quick review to show you if this new model with the price increase is really better than the SNXS 79. So when this watch was launched uh, it came in three different colorways we've got the black the blue as well as the champagne dial if I'm not wrong. Main upgrades would be the movement as well as the bracelet so in terms of the movement Upgrade, we are looking at 4R36 now. All right, so this is definitely an upgrade from the 7S26 movement. Uh, in the past, that one doesn't hack or hand wind. And moving on to this 4R36, this is, you know, with added hacking and hand winding features, which I feel are defin definite upgrades uh, when compared to the SNXS 79. And when it comes to the bracelet, we are looking at really really big upgrades here. So no more folded end links. And this is a true full solid bracelet. All right, it is not a folded one uh, that I reviewed last year. But when looking at the clasp here, all right, it is still a folded or a stem clasp. So this is where uh, Seiko didn't really improve in terms of quality or uh, materials. So before I continue with the review, let me just run you through some of the key specs of the watch. All right, so this watch, the SBSA253, being the remake or sort of like a Mark II or V2 or upgraded version, I don't know how Seiko wants to market this watch, all right. It really stays true in terms of the design and the overall dimensions. So this one here has a case size of 37.4 millimeters and it actually has the same uh, sort of like a helmet or shield shape case design here which looks very good and i think this is what made the snxs 79 so iconic so classic in terms of overall thickness it remains the same this one comes in at 12.5 millimeters that's measuring from the base of the display bag which is not sapphire crystal to the top of the dome hardlex crystal again this is not sapphire crystal and i think this is probably why the fans were complaining all right so uh, with the price increase they don't feel like they're getting lots of improvement when it comes to the materials used we've got an 18 mm luck with here again this stays true to the original design of the snxs and lastly we've got an l2l of 44.5 millimeters making this watch very wearable very good for daily uh, wearing situations to the office or uh, for casual wear, I think not a problem at all. Very versatile size, very versatile dimensions here. So despite all the upgrades that we've found or we've talked about, we've got a new movement, we've got a better bracelet here. Granted, the, the clasp is still rubbish, but the bracelet is way better than before. Uh, fans were still very unhappy. They're talking about uh, a big increase in price. In fact, it is at least double the price. So street price, we're talking about today's street price, all right? Uh, there is really no point in comparing uh, the prices 20 years or 15 years back. So in today's street price, we are looking at a $439 street price for this one, the SBSA 253 versus SNXS79. If you're lucky to find old stock, that one typically comes at around low $200. So we're looking at almost double the price. So are we really getting double the watch? So you'll be surprised, all right? Coming from a person who hasn't been 
a Seiko fan for the past two years or so, right? I got sick and tired of all the Seiko 4R uh, type of movements with their inaccuracies and this and that. Uh, this one here, to be honest, if you ask me, I feel that this is a big, big upgrade from the SNXS 79. Really big upgrade. So those of you haters out there of this new one, all right, saying that this is ripoff, Seiko is not doing the right things, you know, cheating their fans and all that. I tell you, you guys are wrong. Okay? This is a big upgrade from the SNXS 79 in many ways. There's some things that I can't show you through the video or through the review. And that is uh, how I feel when I held this watch. Okay, so holding this watch, looking at the case work, the bracelet, the build quality and all that, this is way, way better than the SNXS 79. All right, day and night. The difference here is day and night. That one felt cheap. The bracelet was jangly, thin, and even for the case, the build quality, the finishing is nowhere near this level. All right, it, it is still stainless steel, but it feels cheaper. Whereas the new one here, SBSA series, totally feels different, feels so much better, so much uh, more well-made, all right? Of course, you're not getting things like sapphire crystal. You're not getting things like a really nice clasp with all the fancy extensions, etc., etc. But it is what it is, all right? For Seiko watches, you do need to pay a premium these days, say, uh, in the range of $1,000 to enjoy all those uh, good stuff. At this price point, around 400, low 400 Singapore dollars, I would say this is a really big upgrade. In fact, I see many things going for it uh, in this watch design. So even the markers here, the print on the dial, all these things, they are just done in so much better quality. The handsets, etc. I think these things are big upgrades. And when people look at the price, all right, they say it is not twice the watch. Of course, you don't get twice the watch, okay? But holding on to this watch, I dare say this is a really big jump in terms of feel and build quality over the outgoing watches. And now let's have a look at the loom shot on the SNXS successor. So as with all Seiko watches, when it comes to loom, I think they never stinge on their loom quality. Right? This is fantastic. Uh, for a non-sports watch, I think this is as good as any Seiko dive watch I've seen. All right? so, of course, in terms of real estate, uh, the loom plots are smaller, but in terms of brightness and application, this is a winner. All right, really high quality bright loom here from Seiko. And now let's do a really quick size comparison between the new Seiko 5 Sports versus my own BB58. You can see this is indeed a small watch, 37.4 mm case. Got a really nice cushion or helmet shaped case here. Very retro looking, all right? and when compared to the BB58, which is not a very big watch at 39mm, it actually at one glance looks much smaller. And now if the lens zoom in very slightly, you can see that even on slight close-ups, all right, the build quality here with a nice bevel to the case side here is very good, very different from the outgoing watch. And I would say this is a big win for Seiko. Right? If you're looking for a watch that is for daily wearing, doesn't cost a lot of money, looks good, you know, retro feel, good size to it. I think this is a really good choice. So there you have it. That was my really quick review of the SBSA 253. We've got different colorways for this one. And I think the all black one looks good without the white chapter ring here. So overall, I would say uh, this is a good model, good new release from Seiko. It is not a rip off like some of the fans uh, have claimed. <laughs> And this is Andy in Singapore. Thank you for watching my videos. I will see you next week for more watch reviews. Goodbye.